Hello and welcome. My name is Abby Green and I'm here with Simon Chong and you're listening to In Plain Sight. Hi, Simon. How are you going? Hi, Abby. I'm going well, thanks. Glad to be here. I'm glad to be involved in this podcast with you. Can you tell me about your vision impairment? What What is the condition called? Okay, so um, my vision impairment is what the simple name was told to me many years ago called Leber's Optical Atrophy. It's now more technically known as Leber's Hereditary Optical Neuropathy, L-H-O-N. It's a hereditary genetic disease where um, a specific gene affects the optic nerve and causes it to sort of somewhat decay. That means that the eye can see, but the brain doesn't receive the full message of what the eye is seeing. Have you found the blind community to be much of a support? Because I I found in Perth there is quite a large community. Yes, I don't know how large it is, but it is a great support. And we do like to encourage and support one another and we like to bring people into our fold. And it was one of the best learning aspects I had when I became vision impaired uh, was to meet other people who are blind and vision impaired because you might be able to learn the technical assistance that you need to be blind and vision impaired, but to learn to live life as a blind person, you need to meet other people who are living that same life. What are some skills you've had to learn since becoming blind? Well, there's all the technical skills. Like when I first became blind, I just turned 18 and it was in 1983, a long time ago. So long ago that we still use typewriters, not computers. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Big clunky typewriters. And so the first skill I had to learn was how to type, do touch typing in the old-fashioned way. I've tried my hand literally at uh, at Braille a few times. And then um, I had to learn from other people, as we were talking about before, about some of the ne- negotiating skills you need to live as a vision impaired person, um, how to catch a bus, how to cook your meals, how to negotiate walking around safely. In some ways, this might without being too dramatic, it I had to relearn a whole lot of everyday life skills to adjust it to this new way of being. It would have been, I mean, I, I can only imagine how tricky that would have been in the fact that you were born sighted. I feel like that is even more challenging. Yes, I think that's, yeah, that's obviously true and I think that's agreed upon. It's often said that if you are born with an impairment, or disability, you don't know any different. You still obviously wouldn't find life easy and you probably wouldn't enjoy it, but um, you don't have to adjust. I often think too, I'm fortunate in that my eye condition is stable and won't degenerate, won't get worse over time apart from other situations. That's, That's some sort of comfort at least. It is. It is. I've seen through other people, how distressing and difficult it can be uh, as time goes by with the deterioration of your condition. It would be incredibly scary. Yes. Yep. I only had to go through that scary thing once. Yeah. Having, Having been part of this community, I imagine you've made some really lifelong friends as well. Most definitely. Most definitely. And there are a number of people who have made lifelong friends and a number of very important people, uh, one or two are, who are no longer with us, who have made a very important impact in my life and have been great inspiration and role models in my life and I'm being very grateful for. What has being blind given you? Um, it's been, it's given me, oddly, I just thought of it then, oddly it, it's given me a little bit of freedom in some ways, the freedom to take time to learn how to be a better me. It's given me the freedom to take up other forms of learning and expression and developing and and those types of things. I think this is probably a common thread 
a lot of people who acquire a disability, it's given me obviously a literal and figurative different perspective mm. upon the world. So literally I see the world differently and therefore I perceive it differently to everybody else and therefore I can appreciate it differently to everybody else, which also links back to the freedom to which I was talking about. So it's allowed you to to grow and expand your kind of understanding of and how you connect with yeah. everybody in the world around you? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, I have to think in that whole kind of sliding doors sort of paradigm where I can never be sure if my life had still gone down the same path as it has done if, if I hadn't became blind. But I do think in some ways um, it may have, but it may not have happened as dramatically and as quickly. So in many ways, it somewhat forced me to take certain directions and enabled me to take certain directions. I think, as a few people have said, because of limited work choices, I was able to then say, right, I'm not very good at this and this and this. I can now focus on what I am good at. And what I am good at is talking to people, being with people and working with people. And that's where I'll focus my work and life choices. Before I was became legally blind, I was going down the path of being a tradesman. What sort of trade, can I ask? Uh, yep. I was working as a sheet metal work apprentice. I was working in a air conditioning factory where we made our own air conditioning units and oh, wow. sh- um, duct ducting back then was made out of sheet metal mm. and we um, did a whole bunch of things like that and I was not very good at it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I became diagnosed with being legally blind, it was somewhat like a blessing in disguise. I no longer had to pretend that I was going to be a tradesperson and have since found that I'm not very handy mm-hmm. and have no real interest in being handy. Also, um, I've heard it discussed in other circles like this before as well. I can't take up casual work, working in hospitality, working as an Uber driver or being a bus driver or anything else like that. So might be a little scary. It would be very scary. <laughs> the other, the other, a number of my friends from way back were also glad that I lost my licence. Um <gasps> I mean, because I wasn't a very good driver either. Yeah. <laughs> um, which also made me wonder if I was losing my sight prior to before I even really noticed. That's interesting to think about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I could use that as an excuse for some of the dumb things I did. But <laughs> exactly. I'm not, not, not sure if that's true or not. <laughs> I think it's it's so unique and wonderful to be able to see this situation and almost this uh, diagnosis as a blessing in disguise in some ways and as a way to grow and, and see the world differently, I think. Yeah, well... That's such a beautiful perspective. I think that, um, that's the only way to look at it in a way. I mean, I'm not saying that I found it easy... Oh, of course. And I'm not saying that I would rather not have this condition. And there are many, many times throughout probably every day where I go, that's annoying. I wish Mm. I could see that. And Because there are times throughout every day where I have to do something is more tricky, takes longer, have to pull out a magnifying glass to read that thing there. Nothing when you have a disability is as simple and as straightforward as it could or should be without that disability. But I have been fortunate in my mindset that, uh, it took a long time to that mindset, by the way, too, that I don't see, well, yeah, there are benefits blessings, I suppose. Yep. I don't know about benefits, but blessings. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's always better to be positive about life. There's no mm. point in being negative on things you can't change, you know? 
that's the key too. You can't change it. So you've got to learn to live with it. You don't have to learn to love it, but you can learn to live with it and, and, and smile while doing it. Exactly, exactly. There's this idea that going blind enhances your other senses. What do you think of that? Do you, have you found that? I've always found this very interesting. At the age I am now, I can't remember what it was like with my other senses before that. But you're more aware of your other senses. It physically cannot improve your other senses in a technical mm -hmm. sense. But I am aware of other noises that other people aren't aware. Oh, like I'll often make a comment. Oh, listen to that lovely bird over there. And people go, where? Or I'll <laughs> go, oh, that person over there is complaining about something to their partner. And they go, what? How can you hear that? I go, well, I can. And that doesn't mean that I'm not paying attention to where I am right now. It's just that I am aware of all the different noises in the room or in the place. And that's what often to the point too where if that sense, especially of hearing, is limited in some way, say if you're in a very noisy environment, like a loud cafe or a nightclub or something, yeah, it can do the opposite. It can make you feel a bit disorientated and make you feel less competent and safe at times. Because you do rely on your hearing and your sense of touch in other ways, yeah. It's definitely an interesting concept. So it's more of rather than enhancing, you just feel like you're more aware of it and because it, you've lost one sense, it kind of in, hones into the other. Senses. Yeah, you're in, you're in tune. And but even with the sense of touch, I will, I, some, if I'm in an unfamiliar place, I will walk in a slightly different way. I will s not shuffle my feet, but I will walk, I will use my feet to feel the ground beneath me and to feel my way. I will sometimes walk with my hand in front of me to feel if there is a door open or if there's a gap where the gap in the door space is or, or things like that. So I don't know if I have any extra sensory perception with my body mm. or my hearing or my sight or my mind. or No, no superpowers. <laughs> not, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Not that I've picked up on that. Yeah. Not none of it work for me in any way. Yeah, <laughs> no superpowers. No. It's been really lovely to speak with you, and very, for lack of a better word, eye-opening. Is there anything else that you wanted to add, or anything? Yeah. Well, I, we touched on this just before. It'd be difficult to call them benefits, but there have been some things that I have developed since I have become legally blind that I would consider have enhanced certain skills. Like at the moment we are recording this interview in the Vision Australia radio studios yeah. in Perth. Obviously I wouldn't have anything to do with Vision Australia if I wasn't blind. I may or may not have gone down the path of working on a radio station if I hadn't have lost my sight. I have since Becoming vision impaired, I have learnt to be much more skilled at verbal communicating and I really like and appreciate that. So that's uh, given me that skill. And earlier you asked me about some of the people that I've met and I wanted to name just one person at least who I wanted to somewhat give thanks and praise to and in some ways give a dedication to because he was a good friend of mine and he passed away in 2016 and his name is David Tiger Regan. A I'm friend, so sorry. A friend to many people. I thought he was my best friend and I've since found out that everyone that he knew thought that Dave was his their best friend because <laughs> he was that type of person. He was a beautiful man. He was a talented musician, a great friend to many, as I said. And it's in many ways that his legacy and his memory have inspired me and motivated to do this work on the recording and to do this work on the radio station and to create these podcasts. So love you, Dave Regan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for speaking with me. I found this 
so engaging and such a wonderfully unique point of view. Thanks, Abby. I found it engaging and interesting <laughs> too. I really enjoyed it and um, I liked uh, talking with you. Thank you. Hopefully we can talk again soon. Yeah, that would be great and look forward to it. Thank Cheers. you for listening. You've been listening to In Plain Sight with Simon and Abby. 